Good morning. Good morning. Ah, you're awake, or most, uh, almost. <laughs> good to see all of you here this morning. Uh, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. This is the last Sunday and the last day of 2023. So whatever, <laughs> I mean, whatever you had that was just, ugh, we've got a new year starting tomorrow. So uh, let's be in prayer for that new year as we begin together. Uh, we have visiting with us today uh, Pilgrim Home Baptist Church. Uh, we're glad to have them a part of, uh, with us uh, and a part of worship here today. A few announcements this morning. do want to uh, remind those of you who had uh, donated in memory or in honor of someone. If you had donated one of these poinsettias, you may, you may pick it up uh, today. Uh, I hate to let them go. I hate to see them go. They're so pretty. Uh, it just makes everything so nice, uh, but, uh, but do remember that at the end of the service this morning. Also, our Lottie Moon Christmas offering, our goal was seven, uh, 7000 and uh, we gave, or you gave, we gave uh, $7,549, uh, so we went o over our goal, so that's good news, good news. That, goes, that money goes, of course, to keep uh, International Mission Board missionaries on the field. Uh, also, in the foyer, there are Bible reading guides. Uh, the orange one is the entire Bible, read through the entire Bible in a year. The yellow one is just the New Testament. Uh, the New Testament, I'd say, if you've never read through the Bible, I'd say start with the New Testament. It's one chapter a day, Monday through Friday. You can start on Monday, and Monday through Friday, one chapter a day. And, and you can do the whole New Testament through the year. Uh, so that's a good goal to have and, and something to reach for. And as I said last Sunday, if you get to the end of the year and you think, oh, no, I didn't make it, it's no big deal. You're reading the Bible. That's what we're talking about. So uh, keep that in mind and grab one of those uh, guides in the foyer if you would like. Uh, and I think you'll, you'll enjoy that as we go through this year. Also, in, the, in uh, Mission Hall over here, uh, the story, this is my story, the, the one sheet that has two questions on it. The first one, how did you come to faith in Christ? And the second one, what brought you to First Baptist Church? What was it other than Jesus that brought you to First Baptist Church? But we'd love for you to fill those out uh, and turn those into the church office. We will be printing those uh, in our newsletter. Uh, so be, in, uh, be aware of that. Let's see. I think that's all the announcements I have. Is that right? I think it is. Okay. Well, let's begin uh, our time of worship together this morning. And we'll do that by standing and singing, Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Yeah. <laughs> Second Corinthians verse chapter five verse seventeen. Therefore, if anyone in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. We're looking forward to our new year, which begins tonight at twelve oh one. Bow with me as I lead us in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning 
thanking you, Lord, that we have a new year. This new year that we're anticipating beginning tonight, we just pray that we will commit ourselves to you. We pray that we'd be able to always remember that you are our God, you are our creator, and you have created a new time for us to turn away from the old time and the old way that we have had. God, the past year has been good, it's been bad, but God, you are always there to offer us an opportunity to enjoy your peace that comes our way, an opportunity, Lord, to rejoice in your joy. And we just sung joy to the world, and God, joy to the world, because you have come and offered us an opportunity for redemption of our sins. We thank you for our guests this morning. We pray that they would be blessed as they hear your word proclaimed. We pray that you would be with our pastor as he comes and he leads us. In, and it, pray that you would bless his sermon. May it be heard by our ears and applied to our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You step down from heaven, humbly you came, God of all creation, here with us. In a starlit manger, Emmanuel, Love Adore, come let us adore, oh come let us adore Him, the Lord, worship Christ the Lord, let all that is within us adore wise men bring their treasures shepherds bow down angel voices sing of peace on earth. What have I to offer to heaven's King? I will bring my life, my love, my all. Adore, come let us adore, oh come let us adore Him, the Lord, worship Christ the Lord, let all that is within us adore. Angels sing, praises ring to the newborn King. Peace on earth, here with us, joy awakening. At your feet we fall. Angels sing, praises ring to the newborn King. Peace on earth, here with us, joy awakening. At your feet we fall. Adore, come let us adore, oh come let us adore Him, the Lord, worship Christ. 
Christ the Lord, let all that is within us adore, adore. Amen. Amen. Would you join me as we go to the Lord in prayer? There have been families in our community uh, and in our church who have lost loved ones in the last uh, few weeks. Uh, here we are at the end of a year. Here we are in a time of celebration and focus. And it's difficult. It's hard to lose a loved one. And so we want to pray for them, pray for those families right now who are walking through these times. Uh, and as I always encourage you to do, if you are able to walk through those times with them, that would be good. Let them know that you care. Let them know that you're thinking about them. Let's go to the Lord in prayer together this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we come into this place to worship you. And Father, we thank you for who you are. You are Almighty God. You are our Heavenly Father. And God, we come as children to You. We come with childlike faith, I pray. And we come and we ask for help. We ask for strength. But Father, we, we want to adore You. We want to praise You for who You are. And Lord, as we sing these songs, I pray that we are able to sing them from our hearts and mean them uh, with our hearts and our minds. Father, we pray for those who are hurting, those who are grieving over the loss of a loved one. It's, it's so hard at this time of the year. And Lord, we know that these days will be marked and that next year there will be a memory of that loved one again. But Father, your help, your strength, your Comfort is what helps us to walk through and to make it to the other side. So, Father, thank you for being who you are. Thank you for walking with us through the tough times. Thank you for being a God who loves us and a God who forgives us. For, Lord, we are, we, we mess up, we sin. But, God, we thank you. That when we come to you in all honesty and in repentance, a spirit of repentance, you will forgive us. Father, we ask your blessings upon this time together in worship this morning. And we ask that uh, you would use the music, the prayers, the proclamation of your word. Father, speak to us. Speak to our hearts is our prayer, Father, today. In Jesus' name, amen. As tradition holds it, we usually sing Christmas carols through the month of December, so we get to do it again today. Let's stand and sing together about the birth of our Savior. <clears throat>
O holy child of Bethlehem, O holy child, you are the Lamb. O holy God, I am so glad you sent your Son to die for me. O holy child, I worship you. O holy child, you are the truth. O word of God made flesh to dwell within my heart, Emmanuel. So abide in me, I pray. Yes, abide in me, I pray. Make me more like you each day, O holy child of Bethlehem. <clears throat> o holy child, cast out my sin. Make me holy, Lord, within. Ignite my passion once again. A holy child of Bethlehem. So abide in me, I pray. Yes, abide in me, I pray. Make me more you each day, O holy child of Bethlehem, holy child, cast out my sin, make me holy, Lord, within, ignite my passion once again, O holy child of Bethlehem, so abide in me, I pray. Yes, abide in me, I pray. Make me more like you each day. O holy child of Bethlehem, so abide in me, I pray. Yes, abide in me, I pray. Fill me more and more each day, O holy child of Bethlehem, O holy child of Bethlehem. O holy child of Bethlehem. Amen. Amen. Abide in me. I like that. I like that. Day by day, we are to be more like Jesus. Day by day, not, not a little bit here, a little bit there, but day by day. As I, as I searched and sought and prayed about what in the world to preach on the last day of the year, we're about to go into a new year. I thought, my goodness, what does God want me to say? What do I do? Where do we go? What do we focus on? And there are two things that I found and I think that are just primary for us to think on, to focus on as we move into a new year. And I, and I entitled it, Two Facts Worth Our Focus. It's sometimes good to look back and remember some things that we know are facts in our lives. You know, the, the children of Israel, many times when something would happen, uh, God would say, set some stones up, you know, 
and put these stones here so that when the children ask, why are these stones here? You can tell them this is where God did something. This is where God worked. And that's big. That's powerful. And so sometimes we need to go back and remember what God did in our lives, through our lives, in front of our eyes this past year. We need to think about things like that and we need to focus on that. And it's good to go back and remember things like that. Those are the things you want to remember. Those are the things you want to remember. Those bad, sad things are not the things you want to remember. Although you want to remember because you feel guilty if you don't, if you know what I'm talking about. If you know what I'm talking about. Some of us say it, it, the grieving process takes time. And sometimes we think, well, let me just ask, have you ever had someone pass away that was close to you and then you got up the next morning and the world just kept spinning? People went to work, people kept doing what they usually do, and it was as if, it was as if they just didn't acknowledge the fact that your loved one passed away. It was, it was like they just didn't even care. And there's a feeling there when, when, when that happens and you think, oh my goodness, you know what? And there's, so there's an attachment, there's a longing to keep that. And yes, you need to remember your loved ones, but the pain, the pain, the, uh, none of us want to remember the pain uh, that comes when we lose a, a loved one. But we do want to focus on what we know, the, the facts, the facts, the facts. This morning I want to give you two facts that can, I think, help us through the new year. If we focus on them, we will find that our year will go more smoothly. Now listen, you heard what I said. I didn't say, you're going to have a perfect year if you focus on these two. I didn't say that. I said, your year will go more smoothly if you focus on these two facts. Uh, so we're going to look at those today, and I think they're worth keeping in mind as we face whatever comes our way in this new year. So if you are able and willing, I ask that you stand in honor of the reading of the Word of God 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4. The Bible says, For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures. May God bless the reading of His Word. I invite you to be seated. As I thought about these facts that we can think about, that we can focus on, I thought about these and I thought, well, what, what can I say? What can I, you know, what can I do that can, that can help people through the new year? What can I say, hey, you can focus on this and this will help you. What, what can I do that can, that, that, to give you something that you could hold on to. And as I thought about that, I realized I can give you nothing. <laughs> I realized that I can't give you anything. And so I thought, well, what can God give you? What can God give? God, can, God has given us His Son. He has given us His Son. And I thought, well, now the, the, the gospel message, the message of the gospel is what I can give you to focus on as we move into the new year. There's a lot in the gospel and so we must focus on it. So as we face a new year, we must first remember that Christ died for our sins. What is it that keeps our minds off of God? I said, yeah, I said that right. I asked that question correctly. What is it that keeps your mind off of Christ? Is it our country, the state of our country? Is it our world? Is it the busyness of our lives? Is it the problems we face? Is it health issues that keep our minds off of God and spending time with Him? Is it just the stress of everyday life in general? What is it that grabs our attention away from God? Look at verse 3. It says, For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received that Christ died. Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. Paul is saying the words that he is passing down to these Corinthian believers is, these are important. Okay, look, what I'm writing to you is you who believe in Jesus, who live in Corinth, what I'm telling you is of utmost importance. 
Well, what is it that's so, that's so important? It's that Christ died for our sins. In the face of anything that comes into our lives, we must keep the fact that Jesus died for our sins on the front burner of the stove of our lives. We must keep that in focus. We must keep that in front of us. Think about this. Jesus died for my sins. Jesus did this. God sent Him and He went to the cross and died for me. Now what, can, what am I facing? Well, no wait. I'm facing this trouble. I, I lost a friend. I, I, I have a friend here who's... who's uh, I have a good friend that I grew up with in Vivian. His mother passed away uh, just last week and they had the funeral. And I just I felt so... I couldn't go to the funeral, but I felt for him. Because I remember her, and she was a she was a good mom. She was a good mom, uh, but I thought about that. My goodness, you know, and I know myself. I can get drawn into things and get very low. I can allow things to get on top of me to a point where I'm just oh boy. You know, I would say ask Suzanne, and she'll tell you, but don't, don't, just don't. You don't need to hear it. <laughs> it's sad. It's embarrassing that I get so low, and I shouldn't. Because what am I not doing? I'm not focusing what should be on the front burner. I've taken what's on the front burner of the stove of my life and I've put it on the back. And I've allowed something else to be up here of more importance. And and that's not the way it should be. Jesus is of utmost importance. Jesus should be on the front burner. And we've got to remember that. And so what He did is of utmost importance. It affects our lives. He died for us. He died for our sins. That's the most important issue that we have in our lives is that Jesus did that for us. The, 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 the number one problem we have in our life is our sin. For us to pay for our sins, it means we have to die. For us to pay for our sins means we would have to die. Now God saw that and He said, now wait a minute. Wait a minute, I know this is the way it is and I don't like sin, I'm against sin, I, 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 I detest sin, I don't want to be in its presence, it, it can't be in my presence, I don't want that. But I love these people. I love these people and I want them to have a way for their sins to be forgiven. Paul, when he wrote the Christians in Rome, he said, for the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Wow! The wages, what we deserve, what we deserve to be paid for our sins is death. That's what we deserve. If we have sinned, we deserve to die for our sins. But, but, a capital B, God loves us and He made it possible for us to have our sins forgiven. And when He took our sins, He placed them on Jesus. They were carried away. If we trust in Him, we will not have to pay for our sins by dying. We can live and be forgiven. We can have life. We can still continue living in this world if we ask God to forgive us of our sins. And we we won't have to pay for our sins because Jesus did it for us. If the most important issue we face is our sin, and that has been dealt with, listen closely, then anything we face this coming year is small and temporary in comparison. Small and temporary. Remember, we're not here forever on this earth. We don't, we're not living here forever. We've got a heavenly home awaiting us. We have a heavenly Savior, a heavenly Father who is there waiting for us. He's prepared a place for us. And so what are we doing? We're, we're looking at our issues and, oh, they're just so big, Brother Craig. Oh, my. Oh, the, and I know, I'm not trying to belittle how you feel, okay? Because I have feelings and I feel the same way when things happen. And again, don't ask my wife. Uh, but, I, you know, things happen and I just let it get all over me. And I'm just like, oh, my goodness. Oh, man. And I shouldn't. I shouldn't. Because the most important issue in my life is my sin. It's not what's happened to me. It's not the fact that I got the wrong sandwich at a local restaurant. Uh, It was a chain restaurant. It wasn't a local restaurant. It was a chain, all right? It wasn't that I got the wrong sandwich. That's not an issue. That's not a big... I don't don't have to, you know, get all worked up about that. It's amazing how we get all worked up about so many little things. 
when we should be worked up about our sin, when we, we should be looking at our sin in our lives and saying, oh my goodness, I have sinned before our Heavenly Father. I need to get right. Oh my goodness, that is the issue. And so if that issue has been dealt with, then whatever we face this new, next year, it's, it, it, it's small and it's temporary in comparison. And I know there are some issues that fall in our laps that feel monumental. I mean, it's just like, oh my goodness, it's too overwhelming. I can't handle it. You're right. You can't. You need God's help. Amen. And God's there. Yes. That's the neat thing. That's the cool thing. That is the, the I can't think of an adjective, but that, that, that is the overwhelming assurance of God's presence that brings us help and comfort. Yes. There are things, yes, that we face but God can deal with them. Our total dependence, total dependence upon Him is crucial for us Amen. to successfully live in this world. Amen. If we're not trusting in God, if we're not trusting in Him for help, we're not going to make it. You, you think, well, there's people out there that don't believe in God and they seem to be making it. No, they're not. Well, they seem to be. Yeah, they seem to be. That's the word, seem to be. That's the phrase, seem to be. Oh, they may have some stuff. You know, they may have some possessions. And, you th and, and we look, oh, oh they're doing real, real well. Have you been in the home? Do you know what goes on behind the doors? Amen. There's a lot of pain in our world. And people need, are in need of Jesus. One of the, one of the ways to apply this lesson of, of focusing on Jesus, that He died for our sins, one of the ways to apply this is just to take whatever comes your way to God in prayer. I mean, whatever it is, just go to Him in prayer. If we can train ourselves, if we can train ourselves to just go to Him and pray, instead of, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do about this. Oh, man, I don't know what I... Oh, i, I got to call somebody about that. Oh, can you believe this happened to me? I don't know what to do about it. I don't know. You know, we, 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 just, we mouth off and we get all upset and we, we try to figure out and we do all this stuff. And I always picture God sitting there waiting for us to come to Him and He's like, uh, hey, uh, uh, could uh, I'm here still. Uh, uh, and I feel like He's just waiting and, and He's... All the power in the universe. That's our God. And what do we do? Oh, well, I don't know. If we can train ourselves to go to Him in prayer. I mean, as soon as something happens, oh, dear God, help me. Please, Father, help me. I don't know how to, what to do right here. I think He's right there with us. I think He's ready to help us. I think He's willing to help us. I think He wants to help us. He has a desire, but He will not bully Himself, you know, bully His way into our lives. He wants you to want Him. He wants me to want Him. We have a Heavenly Father that loves us. Always willing to hear from us. Always ready to hear from us. Do you realize that when I call my father or my mother, they answer the phone? Does that make sense? When I call them, they answer the phone. It's not, oh well, you know, I'll get back with it. No, no. I'm their son, <laughs> and they're going to answer the phone. They will answer the phone, and, it, and there's no doubt. And so when we call on God, God will answer. He will hear us. Instead of allowing distractions to move us away from God, take those distractions to God. Lay them at His feet. Let Him have them. Move towards Him. We tend to move toward whatever's bothering us and, and, and just get right up in the middle of it and go... This is my life. This is my life. All this pain. No, no, no. No, no, no. It doesn't have to be your life. You can, do, you can take it to the Lord. You can go to Him. You can move towards Him. Move away from the pain. Move towards the Lord. God wants you close to Him. He wants to have a relationship with you. He loves you. He loves you. He cares about you. Paul has an authority that he looks to when he comes to what he's saying here. He, he has an authority. He's not just mouthing off and saying, oh, well, you know, look, I delivered to you. A, is a, this is real important, Corinthian Christians. This is real important, you believers. Uh, I, that Christ died for your sins. He has an authority that he goes to. Look at what it says. He says, according to the Scriptures, it has been written. 
Paul sees his authority as the Scriptures, being the Scriptures. So it must be with us. So it must be with you and with me. We must find our authority uh, in the Word of God. What is God saying to us through His Word? What is He saying to us? Our view of God, our beliefs about God should always be based upon what the Scriptures say. What the Scriptures say. None of, you know, it's, it's amazing what the Scriptures don't say and what people believe. People are out there, out in our world, and they're believing all kinds of things. You know, they can't find it in the Bible. You can't find it in the Bible. It's nowhere in the Bible. But they believe it, and they think that it's in there somewhere. Well, it's not. And so we, the, all the more reason for us to read His Word and know His Word. We must immerse ourselves in the waters of His Word on a regular basis. Because He speaks to us. He speaks to us. He speaks to us through His Word. Remember, Christ died for our sins. The second thing that we need to remember, the second fact, that as we face a new year, Christ was buried and rose from the dead. At first, when I was looking at this, I was, trying to, I was dividing it up, and I thought, three facts, three facts. We'll go with three. And then I thought, well, no, uh, one of those facts can't... It, it's, just, it, it's a fact, but... It, I mean, it, the, you, Christ was buried. And if you just have that, you know, that's a fact, yes. But if, if you just remember that he's buried, well, I mean, we remember a lot of people are, have been buried. But this is Jesus. And the more I looked at it, I realized we got two. Buried and rose from the dead are one fact together, if you will. Look at the first part of verse 4. It says, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day. Rationally speaking and thinking, one does not bury a body unless it's dead. Okay, so, you, I mean, normally. <laughs> normally, now come on, now, we don't, you know, if somebody's died, then we bury them. That's how that works. Uh, according to the Scriptures, Jesus was buried. So that means to me, He died. He truly died on that cross. He didn't fall asleep. He didn't go into some coma state. He didn't go, you know, His heart rate just didn't go down so low where they couldn't detect it, and then, oh, He was still alive, really? No, 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 He died. The Bible tells us that. He died. So he was buried. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. I always loved the, I loved that. Yeah, he, he, he borrowed it. I mean, he, he didn't need it. <laughs> he didn't need it for very long. He just borrowed it for a couple of nights. I mean, it's all, I need, it's all he needed it for. Joseph of Arimathea took the body of Christ and placed it, and the Bible says, in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock. Wow. It's a tomb that would only be used for a few days, but because Jesus was buried, because He was dead, He was buried just like anyone else in this day and time. As we face difficulties in this next year, we must remember that what we face was nothing like dying and being buried. You know, that, and I hate, I, I, I hate this. Oh, let me just say this, I hate this. This phrase, it could be worse. It could be worse. Well, I know that's trying to be a source of comfort. I mean, you know, it could be worse. You know what? But what, what I'm going through is bad, and it is worse, because you're not going through it. I'm going through it, and so it's heavy on me. So when you come to me and say, well, it could be worse, Brother Craig. The, the, house, the house I live in just burned down. Oh, it could be worse. Uh, but all my family's pictures, uh, memories. Of the, oh, it could be worse, Brother Craig. I mean, come on! <laughs> if, you get the, if, you, if you can understand what I'm saying there, that's like, wow, really? Really? No. We, we, when we face whatever we face, if we will take Jesus dying and being buried, if we will take that and put that in our minds and realize that this is the Son of God, the very Son of God sent by God from heaven onto this earth to live as a human like you and I, he died and was buried. That's bad, man. We can lose stuff all day. We can lose stuff every day. But our life, it's our life. I mean, this is our body. This is our life. We're living. We're a human being here on this earth. And he lost that. He lost. He died. That may sound, uh, that may sound trite or like I'm trying to minimize trouble if I say just, but look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. But look, first off, I'm a Christian. Second, 
I'm a pastor, and I'm supposed to point people to Jesus. And look, if we will look at Jesus, if we will focus on what he did for us, what we're going through is minimized. It is not as bad as dying and being buried. I want us to take our problems and hold them up to the death and burial of Christ. Paul, in his letter to the Christians in Rome, again, writes this. He says, Therefore we have been buried with Him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have become united with Him in the likeness of His death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of His resurrection. Knowing this, that our old self was crucified with Him in order that our body of sin might be done away with so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died is freed from sin. That's good stuff. (laughs) That is good stuff. The very fact that Jesus died and was buried does minimize our trouble. Well, how? Well, this life is not forever. Our troubles are also not forever. Our troubles are not forever. Do you hear me? Our troubles are not forever. Oh, Brother Craig, I've got this pain in my back. I've got got this this issue in my family. It's not forever. I know to you because to me... Things like that seem forever. Because you're going through them. You're, you're experiencing them. But they're not forever. They're not. Someone once told me they were the interim pastor of a church where I knew they had been for at least 10 years. Now, did you hear that? He, they said they were the interim pastor. They'd been there 10 years and they said they were the interim pastor. And I said, well, now what? what? And then they said, well, every pastor's interim. I said, oh, Sooner or later, you either leave, you retire, or you die. I thought, well, my goodness, in the grand, in the vast configuration of of everything, yeah, I'm an interim pastor. (laughs) I'm just here for a little while. In God's timeline, if you have, you know, it's just in the way things are, I'm just here at this moment. I thought about that, and I realized our problems are interim problems. Whatever we're facing. Oh, I may have this for the rest of my life, preacher. Yeah, you might. But how long is your life? Is it, are you going to spend eternity in heaven? Are you going to have that eternal life? Or are you going to spend it somewhere else that we don't like to talk about? And we don't like to reference. But it is. It's real. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's the, it's a place prepared for the devil and his angels. And hell is not a place I want to go. And God has provided a way out. They will not last our problems forever. The forever life, eternal life, can be ours. If we will repent, repent, turn away from our sins and trust in Christ, this is the life. This is the life we need to be concerned about. This life is temporary. Its problems are temporary. But if we can remember that the pain we are enduring is not forever, we can make it. We do have better days coming. We do have better days coming. Jesus made it possible through His death, burial, and resurrection. He made it possible. He made it possible. Look at the last part of verse 4. Again, according to the Scriptures. He was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures. This is good news. And this is news that should overshadow any temporary problems we have. The very truth of the resurrection of Christ gives us hope for heaven. The very fact that Jesus rose from the dead gives us hope that we too will rise from the dead. It gives us something to look forward to. With Christ, there is always heaven to look forward to. That is the blessed hope. That is the blessed hope. There's a place beyond this world. There is a place beyond this world. This is a temporary home. This will not last forever. We have a heaven that is waiting for us. A place, a place for us. Not somewhere out there, somewhere up there. A place for us. A place where we will be reunited with our, with our parents and our grandparents 
and our friends and our relatives. A place that if they have trusted in Jesus, we're going to see them. We're going to see them there. I know you hear me saying this and you think, well, preachers are supposed to say this. You know, you're supposed to say that, preacher. That's what you're supposed to do. But listen to me. These two facts, these two facts will allow us to, con- to continue to live with hope in this world. You and I need hope in this world. Yes, sir. And this is where it's found. It's found here in the gospel message. It's found here in Christ. He is our hope. He is our hope. Nothing else. No one else. These these facts are essential for any child of God who wishes to successfully live the Christian life. These two facts are the gospel. This is the gospel. We look at our lives and we say, wow, there's so much stuff going on. How how do I make it? Well, you're going to make it if you hope in Jesus. You're going to make it if you hope in Him. That's where our hope is found. It's not found in some, it's not found in our hope. Listen, our hope of making it to heaven, our hope of our sins being forgiven is found in Christ. It's not found in science. It's not found anywhere else. It's not found in some, some guru somewhere who decides, well, I've got the, I found the meaning to life. And if, if it's not Jesus, he didn't find it. <laughs> it's not found anywhere else. There's nowhere else in this world that you can find hope except for Christ. Christ is our hope. So what do we do? What do we remember today? We remember that Christ died for our sins. We remember that Christ was buried and He rose from the dead. Keep those two things. Christ died for your sins. He was buried and rose from the dead. Keep those things in your mind as you walk into this new year. Keep that in mind. You've got someone who loves you so much that He took care of your biggest issue in your life, your sin. He did that for you. That's worth focusing on. That is worth focusing on. That's where we head. That's where we, that, that's where we go when we walk into a new year. We focus on what Christ has done for us. And we remember, we remember in our minds that whatever we face is nothing compared to what He did and He went through on that cross. Nothing. May God always be on your mind. May God always be on your mind, but also may He be on public display in your life as you walk out in this community and around the world. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank You, Lord, for this day. I thank You for loving us the way You do. Father, I thank You for forgiving us. Oh Lord, we don't deserve it, but You loved us so much. You made it possible for us to be forgiven. And we thank you, Father. Lord, as we do walk into a new year, Father, help us to focus on you. Help us to focus on you. You took care of the biggest issue we have. And nothing compares to that, Father. Nothing. Lord, I pray if there's somebody here today that is feeling the urging, the prompting of your Holy Spirit, that they they know they need to say, hey, I need Jesus. I want Him in my heart. I want to be forgiven of my sins. I want Him in charge. Maybe today's the day you need to come and say, Hey, look, I I, I need Jesus. I need Him. Maybe you have questions about what that means. I'll be available this week. I'll be around. Find me. I'm here at the church. You can talk to anybody in this church that can tell you and help you to to know what to do, know what to how to express yourself to God. If you need if you need some words to say, just to express how how you're feeling. We're here to help if we can. Father, we thank you for your love and your grace and your forgiveness. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We're going to sing Living for Jesus. If the Lord is leading you to come, would you come? Let's stand together as we sing. And If the Lord is leading you, would you come? Living for Jesus.
It has been good to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. 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 It's good to be able to worship with fellow friends and brothers and sisters in Christ as well. Um, as you leave this place, I pray, boy, I pray you'll focus, focus on Jesus. I mean, this is the last day of the year. It's kind of, it's, it's kind of exciting, isn't it? There's always a sense of excitement. Uh, what does God have for us this next new year? I don't know. I don't know. But what He has, it's, it's good for us, whatever it is. And we trust in Him. I've asked Brother Wesby to uh, dismiss us in prayer. And uh, Brother Wesby. Amen. 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 The white mic. White. Is it on? Uh oh, did I turn it on? Turn it on. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, I did. There it is. Okay. 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 I got it. There we go. Oh, we got to speak right. right into it. Well, before you, let's, if you don't mind, join hand somebody close to you. Look <laughs> over here. I'd like to pray you, pray you in unity. Like Amen. 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 We come in unity to Christ today. Amen. Lord, I thank you now for life, health, and strength. Thank you. Lord, you brought us from a mighty long ways. Lord, I've been here 65 years. Somebody longer than I have. I thank you for what you've done in 2023. I thank you for what you've done in 1958. Lord, I thank you now for being such a mighty God. Lord, as I walk through 2024, I don't know what 2024 holds. But I trust that you hold 2024 for us. I keep my faith in you now. I can't trust in my bank account. I can't trust in my friends sometimes. But I can trust in the Holy God. I thank you now that you lead me and guide me and show me your holy way. And Lord, let me help me keep you first in my life. Because you said if I keep you first, you had all these things I desire to be added to me. Walk with this church and this church family. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with us as we go to the new year. Lord, the, the Bible said you guide our footsteps. But also show us our stops. Sometimes we need to stop and not go. Show me when to stop and show me when to go, Lord. I depend on you now to lead me through 2024. Like you say, a lot of people, a lot of pre prosperity. But sometimes prosperity fails. Sometimes health fails. But you are God. I trust in you with all my heart and all my soul. And I pray that you walk by our sides as you lead us through 2024. Thank you now for being our God. Thank you now for your son Jesus that died on the cross for our sin and rose early on Sunday morning. We give you praise now. And we say amen. 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 And amen, Holy God. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank, Thank you. you. Amen. <laughs> Happy oh, New Year. Hand there. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs>